this is Pastor Nina. And this is Pastor Josh. And, and we just want to welcome you to our Lessons of Lent devotional. Thank you for journeying with us. This is our, our last week as we ready ourselves now to face Holy Week. And so this Sunday, we make that big uh, transition, Pastor Josh, into uh, Jerusalem with the triumphal entry of Jesus. And so we'll be waving some palms around here come Sunday. And we're talking about, <clears throat> we continue to talk about God's love, but we're talking about holy love as a new dimension of God's amazing love this week. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be taking a look at what it means, one, one for God to be holy, and what does it mean for God's love to be holy uh, through our Palm Sunday text, as well as through uh, one of the Psalms and through uh, a lesson in the Gospel of Luke. So we are excited to be able to share about this facet of God's love with you all. And, and we continue to encourage you uh, when you see God's love being shown in the community, when you find yourself showing God's love, uh, if you have your phone or camera with you, uh, to be willing to take a picture. The, uh, we thank all of the folks that have been sending in their photos uh, using hashtags like FUMCVA and a hashtag seeing love so that the community uh, can also have eyes to see God's love uh, being shown during this Lent. Yeah, thank you so much. And and we remind you too of easterintheburg.com. It'll cue you into the stuff that's coming up. Of course, you'll have it in emails out there in social media, but it's a good resource to refer people to or to check out for the upcoming things that are going to be coming uh, from Palm Sunday forward. So lots of things planned, things that you can zoom into, in-person worship, uh, activities out on the green, lots of things for people of all ages. So remember that, easterintheburg.com. And this week, Josh, as we, we move to wave palms and, and celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, this topic of holy love, it's, it's kind of like, it's, we're not quite to the crescendo of the story of love, but we're almost there in this week. It's like, it's like really up there. And we're going to move next week to just talk about joyous love and the joy of God's love. But, but this week it's holy love. And so, you know, one of the things we have been talking about is like, how well do people really understand what holy is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that that's a really good question because sometimes it, it feels like we might use that that word holy uh, rather loosely and, and maybe more often than it, it should be used. And at other times we're gonna use it uh, enough. Uh, I know in, in trying to prepare for this weekend, just looking through the Bible for uh, moments and, and places that are called holy. Uh, I imagine uh, a story that is familiar for many of us, maybe the story of Moses. Uh, when Moses is, is traveling, um, and uh, comes by that burning bush and goes to approach and, and God speaks out of the bush to say, you know, take off your sandals because you're entering this holy space. Um, a, another text that really stands out to me, probably because of, of our hymns, is that phrase, holy, 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 uh, that we get to sing about. And uh, I know that we get to see uh, the prophet Isaiah, uh, who has this just incredible vision of being in, in God's uh, temple. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, we'll also put this up on the screen. But in Isaiah chapter 6, um, when he is having this vision, we see uh, these seraphs are in attendance above him, each of them having six wings, with two covering their faces, and with two they cover their feet, and with two they flew, and one called to another and says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So it's, it's this big divine uh, and sacredness of, of God and God's love that, that pops to me when I hear that holy. Right. And, you know, if we if we read on a little bit, and we'll encourage you to do that in that Isaiah text, um, you know, what we see the prophet do and, and sort of the the angel characters do in that is is he confesses there's a coal that's brought to his lips that he's a man of uncleanness, of unclean lips uh, among a people that are unclean. And um, some of our contrast is to um, to look at, you know, can our way of being, can our way of loving ever kind of be the kind of holy love that God offers us or that he shows us in Jesus? And, 
Isaiah in that vision, there's sort of a, a, a prophetic move to show that there's a cleansing that can happen of the uncleanness, the unclean lips, the unclean human nature through the power of God. And, um, and sometimes that is like, you know, people, if, you know, if we were able to ask you as you're listening to us, do you think you're holy? Do you display holy love in your life? It, it might set you back a little bit to think of yourself in those terms. Mm -hmm. But I, I think what we're going to hear this week and what we're going to explore um, on Sunday as we talk about the love of Christ is that we're called to a similar kind of love, Pastor Josh. We really are, and, and that we're able to live into that kind of love uh, because, because of God. Uh, we know that the, that Holy Spirit is working within each of us, and kind of similar to that, coal is able uh, to, to cleanse uh, any of that, that sin, that, uh, that muck, and that mire that is within us to make room uh, so that we are able to, to be cleaned and show that holy love. I know um, the, the church is, is called uh, to be holy. It's one of our four uh, notes of what it means to be the church. And in a way, we are uh, set apart so that we can share God's holy love with, with the world. Yeah, and, and you know, in, in owning that term for the church or owning that term for ourselves, as individuals, it's, it's owning our, our inner connection, um, as you said, Josh, to, to this power of the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ at work in and through us, um, the Spirit that birthed us, that we talked about a few weeks ago that calls us to name. Uh, Prophet Isaiah talks about that too in Isaiah um, chapter 43 and really all throughout the book, uh, is God's claim on us as his beloved is for us to live into the holiness and to kind of push back on that, as Isaiah would say, the unclean parts, the parts that cause us to love incompletely or, or to maybe love in ways that, you know, are, are not exactly consistent with, with God, that we, we love when we're challenged to, to love someone that we might not think is that lovable or who's harmed us. And we see as we approach the, uh, the cross that, um, and we've talked about this in the series that Christ is Christ is loving even as he's being crucified. He's taking care of people. He's forgiving. He's asking his father's compassion, even upon those that um, are crucifying him in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that, that's going to be a big focus of our Luke text this this weekend when when Christ uh, is is there on the cross saying to the father, you know, father, forgive them for they know not what they do as this. Uh, an opportunity to show this holy love even to those that are causing uh, such harm and, and death to, to Christ. The other text that we're going to be looking at this weekend, again, is uh, one of the Psalms, Psalm 145. And, and we always encourage you to read the entire text uh, for our devotional today. Just want to be able to highlight um, some of the verses from that Psalm. Uh, beginning in verse 8, we hear that the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. And then if we hop to, to verse 21, the psalmist uh, continues that my mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And so I, I think one of the things that the psalmist is sharing with us is that God's holy love is, is offered for all of us, you know, regardless of how uh, good or, uh, you know, times when we are bad. Uh, in, in the midst of all of that, God is going to continue to, to be loving us. Um, and, and that may be difficult for us sometimes at, at times um, we might need to be reminded that God's love is, is for everyone and maybe not just those who we see as, as good. Yeah, and that we're included in that. I, I think it was very beautiful. Pastor Josh and I got to spend some time this morning talking about the Easter story with our preschoolers here in the church. And uh, they were so excited. And I have to say, they know the story of the resurrection really well as we shared it. And 
Uh, we got to be in the sanctuary with them today for the first time in a very long time, actually almost a year uh, being in that space. And, you know, we heard from little mouths that God loves us even when we're bad. And we were reinforcing that. And that's so true that that we don't stand, we don't stand, no matter how we feel about ourselves outside of that love. And no matter how we feel about others too, they don't stand outside of that love. Um, there can be a, a contrast here. And, and Josh and I were talking about, for those of you that are doing this study, there's a contrast that the, the author of the study talks about is a difference between human love and holy love. And we wanted to push up against that a little bit um, because in creating us as human beings, we're created in the image of God uh, and we're called to love as God loves, to follow this holy way um, is a completely human way. God doesn't intend for us to have imperfect love as human beings. We choose it. Um, we choose our prejudices. We ch choose um, things that uh, we harbor as resentments and wounds that keep us from loving fully. And sometimes we're just sinful. We're greedy and we're motivated by selfish ambitions. You can name a whole list. Paul's really good at that in scripture. Um, but God created us as human beings to love as God loves, to reflect Christ's image in the world. And so to, to have this human sense of love in the way that God created us to love is to be Christ-like. Um, so we, we wanted to lift that up as I, we don't really like that dichotomy. Yes, we humans fall short and we sin, and that's our hangup. Uh, that's our problem. Christ was perfect. We are not. But Pastor Josh, there's a process of perfection that we're called to. Yes, there is. And, and that process is uh, possible because of God's grace uh, that is just freely offered to us even before we have this relationship with God. And, and we all have this opportunity to, to recognize our need for God's grace, that it's uh, because of, of Christ that we are able to be saved from our sin and our guilt and our shame that are tied with that. Uh, and then God's grace is able uh, to work within us in this uh, process of holiness and the sanctification uh, for us to, to be that uh, image of, of God that we are created to be, to, to be able to love God fully, to love others fully. Um, and so we, we know that we are all along uh, this, this spectrum of, of holiness, that we are all on to perfection, uh, which we celebrate is, is possible here on earth because uh, God uh, wills us to be able to do that. Um, and we're able to because of God's grace and love. I, I love the sort of focus text if you are doing the study, and I'll share that with you. It's, um, it's from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, um, and it reads, In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. And so, you know, in the midst of who we are, honoring Christ as the Holy One, um, as the author of Hebrews would say, the pioneer, the perfecter, the one that we follow behind in the faith. And that gives us the ability to witness, to live, um, to reveal, to, to mirror, whatever the right words are for verbs, the very love of God. Um, and that's always a process. It's always a process. We get up some days and we do it pretty well. And then the next day, maybe we don't, or maybe it's moment to moment. And that's part of the human journey in our own struggle with sinfulness. But God's grace is sufficient. And we all are called to that part of being perfected in Christ. Amen. So church, we hope that this has been an opportunity for us all to uh, have our eyes be made more ready to see God's holy love uh, as we go into Holy Week, that our, that our hearts are uh, lifted and are cleansed and, and ready to not only see God's love being shown, but to be able to show it to others. Uh, we are excited to get to uh, be in worship with you all on this weekend. We are excited to travel with you uh, with and with Christ to Jerusalem, to the cross, uh, and to that open and empty tomb. And we encourage you to make that journey. As, as Pastor Josh says, we're excited 
make that journey. Set aside some time this week, whether you're going to be with us in the stream, catching it on demand or coming by. Um, there will be opportunities for you to reflect in different ways to encounter the story. Make the space and time to make that journey, that journey from from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem through the pain of the cross, the passion of Christ Jesus to the joy of the resurrection. It'll be transformative. So we invite you to this journey. We love you. We look forward to hopefully seeing you in church. Take care. Take care. We'll see you soon. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let it sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose.